ideas how of how to make how to curve the shockwave you do. All right, please. So before you draw it, can you tell us your strategy? Um, because if you so ultimately, if you have okay, okay. Yeah, move it here. So ultimately, if you have uh, stuff that's positive on the left and stuff that's po and negative on the right, they will collide. So you want the ones closer to a boundary to be more on the positive side. So you start moving towards the right, and the ones that will merge later are more negative. So then you'll push to them. Okay. All right. Cool. Please. Sounds promising. I just hope I can draw well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, let's see how your initial condition does. <laughs> Alright, we can see we get a shockwave over here. Right? Yeah. I was hoping for the one in the middle though. Oh, the one in the middle? Yeah, okay. The one in the middle should be moving right. So okay, so you are you are kind of concentrating on this yes. region? Alright. So okay, so we get a shockwave forming. You get multiple shocks. <laughs> yeah. What? You get multiple shocks. I get multiple shocks. Yes. I also get a small shock over here. And this eventually becomes a shockwave that moves towards the right. And I think it'll collide with the shockwave. So what, what do you think is going to happen after the two shockwaves collide? Move towards the left. Move towards the left? Why? Uh, so the average is negative. The average is going to be negative. That's right. Okay, you can see the left one move towards the right. The right one move towards the left. And after they merge, I think you are right. They would move towards the left. I think you are Okay. Anybody wants to come and try drawing like a, uh, a solution that is a single shockwave but that curves? And the hint is that if you want the shockwaves to be moving faster, you need to have more positive and more negative. Try to span the whole domain, right? Who wants to get like a single shockwave that would, uh, would curve? I can try that. Okay, please. Okay, uh, it's pretty obvious this one is moving towards the left, so let's starts to kill it. Okay. All right, please uh, have a seat. Oh, thanks. Uh, easier. Let me see. All right. <coughs> cool. So we get a interesting one. Okay. So, what is our strategy? Can you tell us about it? Uh, well, I just draw a uh, like a, a shape which looks like already like a, pretty much like a shockwave. Okay. So it has a sharp discontinuity in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just take the make the average of mm -hmm. the two like piecewise constant. Yeah. The minus. Okay. The wave copy it towards the left. So, so you would you are trying to make the, this initially propagate towards the. Towards the left, and then what would it do afterwards? Uh, well, I mean, as long as, since this looks like a piecewise constant, like piecewise yeah. uh, constant function. Yeah, yeah. So as long as the the two constants, the average of two constants is negative, so they should probably get to that. Yeah, I think this goes towards the left slightly. It has a small curve, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, uh, so I think your strategy is. Uh, is working. I mean, initially it's going towards the right slightly, and now it's going towards the left slightly. All right. Cool. Thanks. Anybody else wants to try? Make it more dramatic. Yes, please.
shockwave tra- challenge. <laughs> so we're going to the left first. Ah, uh, it's either either way. You want to make it move to one was one direction dramatically first, and towards okay. the other direction then. Be a second shock, but okay. Nice. What is your strategy? Um, so the idea was basically start off a shock, which is mostly on the positive side. So yeah. it's going to the, uh, I guess, right, and then it's going to pick up more and more of that curve that goes linearly negative, and then it'll eventually average to be negative. Hopefully. Cool, I think that's a good strategy. Let's let's take a look. So you can see the shockwave is initially moving towards the right, and as uh, as all these characteristics, which is sloping towards the left direction, collide with the shockwave, I think it'll, like what you said, it'll start moving towards the left, hopefully. Right. The key thing is that the the speed of the shock wave is in this case is the average of the left characteristic speed and the right characteristic speed. All right. Let's uh, wait it till this thing is going to collide. The shockwave is still moving towards the right because now this is U left and this is U right. right. So U left is around 0.5, U right is, well, now it's also around 0.5. And ultimately, U right is going to be around negative 0.9, and that's when the shockwave is going to start moving towards the left. You see? This is now curving backwards and the shockwave is moving towards the left so very good job all right cool and uh, I think a, a case I, I would I would construct is more like this so you get zero and uh, I get a huge peak over here and I get solution that like is gonna be more like that Okay, so 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 you get a shockwave in the middle, right? So when, where is the shockwave going to move in the beginning? Uh, I was trying to construct a shockwave over here. I think the shockwave is going to move towards the right initially, and my strategy is have this whole peak going to collide with the shockwave, so the so the solution at the r at the left would diminish pretty fast. But the solution at the right is going to stay pretty negative, and the solution and and the shock wave is going to be uh, curving towards the left uh, towards the left ultimately. So as we are doing this, another challenge I would ask you is uh, is the following. So we did this analysis specifically for the Burgers equation, and the speed of the shock wave is an average speed of the shock wave uh, of the characteristic speed on the left and on the right. Is this analysis true for other conservation laws where the function where the flux function is not u squared over two but a general function of u. What would the character characteristic speed be if f is a, a general function of u? Hmm? 
the derivative of f on u at what u? We have a u left and a u right. The derivative of f on u is the characteristic speed, right? Is c on these straight lines, and that is we said is true for any conservation laws. But what is the speed of the discontinuity of the shock wave? Maybe let's just do another little analysis. Okay, so let's replace this integral form with a general integral form. L and R of u dx plus f of u L and R equal to zero. All right, so that's instead of u squared over two, we have f of u. We are going to have the same picture of u as a function of x, and uh, we have a shock wave, and we choose L and R such that the are immediately to the left and to the right of the shock wave, so that as the shock wave move a little bit, this is the area we gained a rectangle. This again is equal to ul, this is ul, this is ur, minus ur times this delta x, which is us times dt, and this is divided by dt, where us is the speed of the shock wave, the same analysis. Now, f of u is not u squared over 2, but just a, a but still the same as what we have before, f of u r minus f of u l divided by, or not divided by anything, would be equal to zero. So u s, in this case would be, this is what I will write, delta f divided by delta u, right? And delta f is f of u left, minus f of u right and delta u is f of left minus uh, u of left minus u of right all right and remember compare this against the smooth region we find something interesting the smooth region the speed of the characteristic is equal to what yeah. df du right this is simply a generalization of the speed of characteristics in smooth regions. Or the smooth regions characteristic is just a, uh, the extreme case of an infinitesimal shock wave. Right? A shock wave that has infinitesimal uh, delta u. So everything makes sense now. Right? The speed of shock wave is delta f over delta u, and in the case, in the special case of Burgess equation, f equal to u squared over two, this reduces to the average of left and right uh, characteristics. And in general, it's just a delta f over delta u. And by doing that, we can figure out the speed of the shock wave for any scalar conservation law. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, with that